fun. Noted. <laughs> My password is. Yeah. <laughs> password. Exactly. Password with small p. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, underscore between pass and word, and then an exclamation mark in the end. Yeah. <laughs> so how many people are in here? Six persons. Let's just give it a few more minutes to see. Maybe there's a, a volunteer for to be a note taker. So we um, we discussed this, the, or I think we did it afterwards last time that we should probably have a moderator and a note taker uh, for these calls, um, and we should rotate these um, roles. Um, and we, I'm not sure how we're going to do that, but uh, but we will, yeah. So we'll probably do that and, and probably have some of the uh, the other organizers uh, do the moderation uh, later on. But uh, if anyone wants to be a note taker, just uh, yeah, put that name in the note ta taker field and uh, that would be nice. Eight people. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. We'll just wait two more minutes and then we'll get started just to let people join. Where is all that noise coming from? Is that you, Lucas? Okay, I'm not seeing more people joining, so let's just get started. Um, so I, I put in some uh, some items for the agenda today um, since last time. Um, I created some uh, templates for, for organizers to, uh, to use both for events and for groups. Um, just a quick uh, show of these. If you want to use them, it's uh, created using the, the drawing thing in Google and that, yeah. I don't remember what, it, what it's called, but uh, you can just uh, yeah use them as you like. Yeah, you can uh, use the slide gener uh, background generator for generating the background as you uh, as we showed uh, previously, and uh, yeah just uh, take it and use it if if you want to. We have one for the group as well, so probably seen this already, but it's uh, in here and. Um, yeah, it would be nice to align at least uh, maybe the group um, uh, covers on, uh, on meetup.com because that would also be, uh, look a, a lot more nice on the uh, the website. Um, it's sort of a, a mixture of everything right now, uh, a lot of communities. Um, but it, it could be uh, be awesome to have, uh, have those aligned as, as well. Um, so that was just a small... Um, yeah, uh, templating stuff. You can. Uh, there's also a uh, templating for. Uh, I tried to do some uh, social media covers and stuff like that. Uh, just an example of that. So you, it's uh, in the templates folder in the Cloud Native Nordics Google Drive, and you can uh, just use them as uh, as you please. Um, I think that's the first one. Oh, and, and I forgot to to mention. Uh, uh, um, this is of course recorded, so don't say anything you you don't want to be on the internet on this uh, video. Um, the second item that I put on is uh, Jebe and I have been doing a lot of stuff uh, around the, um, the front end, the new front end, and the. the... Somebody saying anything? No. So, so Jebe and I have been doing a lot of stuff on, uh, around the uh, front end and the uh, stats API, um, and we are trying to to sort of. Uh, 
finalize the efforts to uh, to get this put on to be our sort of main website for cloudnetinordics.com. Um, so since last time, um, there's been, uh, I think Oliver pr pr proposed the, um, the design by Andrew. Um, um, and uh, we did some changes to align with the colors and styling and in terms of what we already have running. Um, and this is what you see on, um, on this uh, v2 version 2, cloudnetinordics.com. This is sort of the new site as it is right now. Um, we also uh, did a lot of stuff around the infrastructure as well. Uh, just put this in here. I found this tweet this morning <laughs> with KISS. You know, it's usually keep it simple, but uh, for us, I guess this is a Kubernetes-based infrastructure for static sites, um, which is uh, maybe a bit over-engineering, but um, we've, I think this is a really nice way to sort of show off some of the projects. Um, in the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and also use these um, uh, this infrastructure setup and and stuff, and keep it every, keep everything in the public so that everybody can use it and uh, and present uh, at their meetups around. Yeah, this is uh, how you can set up Grafana or Flux or whatever you uh, you want to. There's a lot of examples on uh, on how to do that in in that uh, stack that we have uh, sort of set up right now. But, but sort of just the highlights of it is that we use GitHub Actions now for um, to yeah basically build and push Docker images, which which then goes to our Cloud Native Nordic Docker Hub. Um, we have Flux um, running in in the cluster, uh, so we have a two node cluster on DigitalOcean. Um, and I think you are right, Lucas, in in the comment that you put in there that uh, we should of course mention that DigitalOcean is a sponsor of our our website and, and hosting um, and hopefully get more uh, money on that account at some point when we sort of empty it um, and I think that uh, I think that's totally fine to uh, to do that um, we, we if you haven't heard we had we got thousand dollars and I think we are currently using around twenty dollars a month for uh, for these uh, two notes yeah I mean I mean that kind of stuff is fair uh, <clears throat> I think and it, it makes sense to have something um, something like that. If, if CNCF someday would show up and say, like, we've got hosting at whatever provider that is providing Kubernetes stuff, well, sure, maybe. But yeah. at the moment, we, we just had the, the deal with them, and like, it makes a lot of sense for us. Yeah, and it's, it's, kind of, it's, it's okay. $20 a month is uh, it's not that bad, and, and we can can have that run for a couple of years with the current amount if we don't spend it on anything else. Um, but um, but yeah, let's uh, just add a small logo sponsored by or something uh, on the main page when you go live. But as, um, yeah, so right now, if you uh, push to uh, the stats API or the website, the front end, uh, it will be uh, automatically deployed into this uh, new cluster um, using Flux. Um, also, the Nginx ingress controller, SAT manager, and everything uh, is in the cluster as well. I use um, Helm, the Helm setup with the uh, Flux. I'm not gonna go into that much details, but just to uh, quick sh show what, how it looks. Uh, so I use the CIDs from Flux, which is a Helm release, which basically just points to a chart and you can set the values. Um, it's uh, fairly straightforward and I'm not an Helm expert at all. Uh, this is the first time I'm actually using Helm, so this was also a nice challenge for me. Uh, so if you are a Helm expert, please have a look at it and, and sort of uh, put your comments in there. Um, I'm sure the uh, the chart uh, thing that I did, so I created a basic chart. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the right solution, but it, it works right now uh, for basically uh, you can just enter a, a Docker image, you can set some environment variables and run some commands in the container. That's basically what we need right now. And you get ingress and you get the service. And that's sort of how it works right now. But yeah, everything is up for discussion. This is just uh, sort of the beginning. Um, also added the uh, Grafana and Prometheus for monitoring um, and I made it public. Uh, public read so everyone can basically see uh, what we have running inside of our cluster and you can use this for, for reference as well 
So uh, this is just the Prometheus operators uh, basic thing you get from when you install that. Um, but it's, it's some nice dashboards and stuff. So um, yeah, please use it if you if you want to uh, show some stuff around this. Um, it's it, it works quite well. Um, and uh, yeah, it was pretty easy to uh, to set up. So um, and yeah, it's just nice to keep everything in the open and uh, and make it visible for, for everybody to uh, to take this as a use this as a reference to uh, set some set something up themselves or do this at a you know a workshop or whatever. Um, not sure. I, I think we'll probably formalize this in, in in some way, and and I will definitely do some. Um, some readme stuff because I haven't done anything about uh, around that yet, but that will sort of explain the the overall architecture and how everything is uh, it, it's working and set up. So um, I'll be doing that later on. You want to say something? Also, when <clears throat> when mentioning the workshops, um, yes, that's something um, formalizing the, the stuff I had earlier and that uh, which. It's in the cloud native Nordic people, but actually making that in Go is work in progress. Now, this first first study months have been a bit intensive, but um, I have a well, I have a deadline because um, myself and Oliver are gonna we decided we're running a workshop by later this month, so that's a deadline for me <laughs> to push it out. <laughs> so at the next next cloud native Nordic meeting, I should have something. <laughs> um, awesome. And how? Is that the workshop CTL thing you are talking yes, about? Yes, workshop CTL. So, like, they, I, I have a, a sketch of, of how it should work. Like, in it, then, like, choose provider, DigitalOcean, TCP, whatever, then apply, generate, uh, sorry, gen, generate uh, the amount of manifests you want uh, from some kind of Helm, probably some combination of Helm and uh, static manifests, and then you can apply patches through. JavaScript uh, with, with the JK, I think it's called. Uh, so, which is can pipe uh, pipe your things, and then uh, Workshop CTL apply will just go ahead and push all of this, probably together with Flux or something, so that uh, we can actually like um, have a single repo, uh, which is similar to this uh, Kate's config repo, where we can one set up the Workshop environment and have it running. And also share the the different like uh, share it with with the the environments with with each other. So, for example, um, the cube config files are going to be encrypted with some kind of key. So, probably a pretty short key, but anyways, uh, some key that we can share if we want internally. And uh, with that, you can actually apply when decrypting. Uh, so, so that's. All the all the uh, manifests that are running in the cluster, everything is going to be up on GitHub, like in some this kind of repo, and uh, and then uh, yeah, we can collaboratively uh, create and manage these workshops without or with with the minimal overhead. So as a complement to this already nice setup with, with Flux and all the other things. Cool. Yeah, I uh, I sort of have one one thing as well that we maybe could discuss. So I'm using sealed secrets right now for uh, for sealing the the few secrets that we have. But we have, we have a couple of things that we want to keep secret. Um, and you of course of course need a, a private key to uh, or at least a key uh, to actually uh, yeah to to encrypt uh, stuff. Uh, so if if one of you guys wanted to add some secrets, you you need the key to actually. Um, yeah, to encrypt it. Um, I'm not sure how we are sort of uh, how we should um, if you should if we should set up a password manager or anything like that that will be sort of um, in the organizers channel or something like that that we all have access to uh, for passwords for the, the admin password for Kafana. I have a create an admin password here as well that I'm currently uh, storing. Um, but it would be nice to maybe share this in uh, in, in some way. I just created a tool that basically does this, uh, but and the only requirement is that you have access to the cluster. So uh, we could probably use that. 
Okay. But I, I, I can maybe show it someday, maybe next month. But it's, it's, I just got it working now. Uh, and it's basically encrypted secrets. Uh, and there's a CLI to create the encrypted secret. And the cluster has the uh, public and private key, so it actually can like, decrypt it and put it in as uh, environment variables or secrets or whatever. Okay, it's, it sounds like, uh, a lot like sealed secrets. Yeah, it is, but it's it's there isn't one uh, private key. There's like a private key per namespace, and if you have access to that namespace, you can put in uh, you can put in encrypted values, which or rather you can create encrypted values that the namespace can then decrypt. There's plenty of uh, tools available as well. Yeah, yes, most people use like one password, last pass, keybase, whatever. We can probably convert someone. Yeah, uh, I think that would be nice yeah, to just yeah. have a sort of a, for that, and and of course we can also keep uh, yeah keys for encryption and stuff like that in there as well. Um, but yeah, let, let's, let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, but you can present next time, and uh, we'll uh, evaluate your project. <laughs> all right. So I think um, I think that was all the infrastructure stuff. Uh, yeah, Prometheus is up there as well, and Prometheus.cloudnetanautics.com. Uh, um, um, we are, <laughs> Yeb and I were just the other day discussing projects to put in there. I think we will see if we can get all of the CNCF projects in there in some way, <laughs> just to to give it a, give them a sort of a run and see how it works. Uh, but it would be nice, but we're probably gonna be uh, needing a more compute to, to run all of those <laughs> different projects. <laughs> But we'll see. It goes from the it goes from the starter twenty twenty dollars a month, a couple of hundred. So like, yeah, to run a static but, website. Yeah. <laughs> but it is it's it's a nice uh, it's a nice thing, uh, like yeah, for uh, for reference. Exactly, and and everything is public and in the open, so uh, hopefully people can uh, can use it. All right, uh, the website is available at V two right now uh, until we sort of. Uh, yeah, finalize that. Uh, that's still a lot of open issues. Um, so if you want to pitch in, uh, please check out the issues. There's a lot of them here. And uh, it's, of course, front end stuff. So if you want to challenge yourself, I was a bit challenged to uh, to dive into the front end. It's been a couple of years since I've been playing around with HTML and CSS, and I'm really bad at it. Um, but it was kind of fun to. Uh, to try it out and uh, yeah so we, we need to get some stuff uh, done uh, in order to um, to make this go public and I uh, don't think that's a, a long way uh, but there's um, a few things that need to be uh, be fixed uh, we need to put something in the front page uh, for example that would be a good start uh, to get the meetups uh, in here and maybe some stats or whatever um, but otherwise I think the uh, the website is uh, it's pretty nice right now. Um, if you have any, um, so if, if you ch if you could check your your country and and check that every logo is uh, is looking right, uh, that would be nice. And then make PRs for uh, for dark logos. Or that would uh, would be nice on the on the white background. That would be a, be a big help. I think uh, all countries need to uh, to do that. Um, but yes, I think that's the website. Um, Stats API, there's also issues on that. We added uh, some, some issues on the meetups uh, generator as well for, yeah, for getting, basically getting more details out there. Um, uh, be able to uh, select or filter by city and, uh, and stuff, stuff like that. Um, so any help is highly appreciated, uh, whether it's, uh, adding a, a new infrastructure project, or it's uh, building something at the front end, or adding stuff to the back end, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, all help is uh, highly appreciated. Um, and I think that's it for, for sort of what I put on the agenda for today. Any questions in, in terms of the web, new website and infrastructure stuff that I just uh, went through? No? I'm sorry, um, Lucas, what is AI? Action item, sorry. Action item. 
Yeah, no, not our artificial intelligence. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm not sure how you're going to apply AI and this problem. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Lucas, you have the, uh, the next item. Yeah, um, cool. Yeah, so I, um, was it yesterday or, or something, did, um, or just, we had a YouTube account for Kubernetes uh, Finland uh, from a couple of years ago. Um, we've not used it super frequently, but um, as, as much as we've, we've been able to. And um, now I just, well, renamed it to Cloud Native Nordics, put in the logo and, and did some other stuff. And uh, it's a collaborative Google account. I think it's called a brand account even or something like that, which we, we all can use to upload videos and, um, well, put, put different kinds of talks in there. Um, and also these, uh, yes. these recordings, um, so we can reference it from different places that like go here and you'll find, I don't know. Uh, so my question, um, so do you other uh, like is like have you done recordings or like in other places? We've tried in Finland, not always succeeded, but a couple we have like maybe fifty percent of them recorded. We have recorded and uploaded to uh, the multiple engineering YouTube account. Uh, cool. Because that's what we have available. So for the meetups we have run in our office, that's where we uploaded. Awesome. We have I'm been, not uh, against uploading to the uh, cloud native account in the future. That was just what we had available at the time. So we have been uh, discussing uh, recording for a while in Aarhus, but we uh, we don't have any sort of gear to actually uh, to rec do the recordings, and uh, so we so we haven't done anything like that yet. But we uh, we want to to do something because it would be nice, and we get a lot of requests of. Uh, is this recorded because I would like to watch it, I can attend and stuff like that. So it would be nice to um, to be able to do that uh, somehow, um, but I'm not sure how to uh, to get access. We don't have any good upset, uh, set up, but we do set up a uh, webcam. We have like a podcast microphone, like a Blue Yeti, uh, and then we record from the laptop using open broadcast software. It's something that you can stream directly to YouTube and then you can do like in, in like live studio editing afterwards, cutting things out, adjusting stuff. Uh, I could do a demo of it, how we do it at one point if people would be interested. That would be, that would, yeah. be very interesting. Because I have no clue how to, also, uh, to do it. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice to see, see how you do it. Uh, so I, I basically made the decision a week ago or so that I'm going to take control of the recordings myself and by the it's it's like if if going for a like mid-range uh hardware uh it's around a thousand euros or so um for like cameras and stands and like microphones and all that kind of stuff um so so that's what i'm what i have like now bought uh, and i'm gonna use it on the three meetups we have at the end of october so then I can report. Kind of next sounds time. like you will do the demo. But yes, we'll do the demo on how to do the recording. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we, yeah, I think we should both do it, so we, we can. Yeah. Like, so my solution uh, is a very budget. It expects you to be recording on a laptop that is doing the presentation. So we haven't found a good solution for live de you know, demos yet. But as long as it's just a slide deck, it's totally doable. With just if you have a Jabra for conference calls and the uh, laptop. Uh, webcam that's like start at least it will mm. get you something better than you already have so very little setup we can get you up and running with exactly exactly yeah that it makes sense to have two kinds of i don't know we, we should document this somewhere just like how to run a meetup and then like recording options like and here is uh if you have like 200 euros to spend or here is if you have a thousand euros to spend and then like go with it um yeah because because it's been a bit brittle um like or, or let's say inconsistent uh, the way we've recorded our meetups. Uh, sometimes we've had someone that 
could could for free come and like randomly record and sometimes we've had like um professionals um uh, sometimes the company that's been sponsoring oh um uh, have have done it themselves and uh, in every place we've gone to it's been like different setups so it been really annoying to like arrive there an hour earlier before the meetup and see that oh well this there's no way this could work and then like sorry guys like we can't <laughs> no recording for this time so yeah um now with, with this and i finally uh, like finally um, um, my brother is interested in, in like video editing and that kind of stuff so he's gonna actually come and do the camera uh camera oh. stuff <laughs> can you send me a list of the stuff you bought because i'm kind yes. of interested in getting a better setup yes i i'll do that thank you cool. um the then a uh, question yeah a uh, question uh, around Ivo is not here right <laughs> just start to ask if uh, there's any uh, any way to uh, to get cncf support for for doing something like this no, I, don't, I don't think he's no, no. um Yeah, but we'll we'll I'll, I'll I'll see if it actually works out at all <laughs> first, and then <laughs> then we can <laughs> we can ask. Um, then so um, also with videos um, like photos, I've handled the videos have been inconsistent, inconsistent, but the photos have been even more inconsistent. Uh, <laughs> so. Like most of the stuff I just have on my phone or like some random drive or similar. So should we, what, what do you prefer? Because I saw that in this uh, Google brand account, we also have access to photos. So like th those who are added as admins to, um, to YouTube can also share the photos uh, equally well using the same account um, in Google add Photos. Me, add me as an admin. Cool. Yes, I will do that. Um, so, is that? Do you think that kind of stuff would make sense, or like Flickr, or like I don't know? We maybe we could just use Meetup thing too, but yeah, but that's really uh, bad. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> the Meetups uh, it photo has to be stuff easy for people. Really bad. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I feel that it has to be so easy that you can just. Like from your phone, select 15 photos and upload and somewhere fairly easy. That's like mm -hmm. the entry point level that needs to be for people to actually do it. Or for me to do it, sorry. Yeah. I will not speak for anyone else. Yeah, uh, another, another idea could be to uh, be more, uh, have even more people uh, do tweets with the Cloud Native Nordics hashtag and uh, just um, you know gather photos there. Um, that will also create that's some. Actually, uh, that's uh, actually really. That's a good idea because uh, usually you have your own stuff set up in a way where it synchronizes uh, photos to uh, various uh, accounts and uh, and therefore, well, the meetup sucks. Uh, I I think agree on that. But it's uh, one thing it doesn't do. It doesn't interfere with anything else. And I think that would also promote the Twitter stuff. So I think that would be a great way of doing it. Yeah, I think we, so at every meetup, we, we try to encourage people to uh, to do a lot of tweets and use the Cloud Native Nordics hashtag. Um, and, and maybe we could uh, encourage them to just uh, upload pictures using the hashtag as well on Twitter uh, as, as media content instead of uh, actual tweets. Uh, do we need to do take some action for uh, if we're going to encourage more collection of photos and stuff? Uh, for giving getting approval from attendees at Meetup, yes, there's some kind of disclaimer we need to have somewhere or something. Anyone has been media trained? Well, I usually ask people if it's okay to record the Meetup, but, but uh, that's not in the Cloud Native sense. That's what is it was in another Meetup. So we uh, we asked people whether it was okay, and if there was just one person in the room that said it was not, then we would leave it. 
And, and uh, another thing I was thinking about when, uh, when uh, Lucas was talking is, what about uh, crowd mics? Is that something you're using? And uh, uh, if we look at something like the, uh, uh, you know, the, the color balance uh, in different locations, that would also uh, have an effect on how the videos would uh, look. Just look at the, uh, just look at the, uh, at the, uh, I'll just have this one shut up. Uh, just look at the, at the ways we look in the, uh, uh, on, on the left side uh, as video. There's a, a variety of colors spanning from purple over green to whatever. So, so are you planning on having something, Lucas, that would tell you what the what the what the color temperature of the room is, and uh, where are you considering a video uh, only on the uh, the speaker and the uh, presentations, or also at uh, on the on, for instance, people asking questions? So we have currently done like uh, we had one webcam that was facing the presenter and one facing the audience, uh, but with the setup we have, that's quite kind of too heavy, and I kind of feel that any recording of the presentation is better than none so color matching the recordings feels a little bit like overkill right now so uh what i'm planning to do is basically well i bought a sony ha sony handycam um that i can place somewhere uh facing the, the speaker and uh then i have like small or i'm gonna get a small kind of mixer board for <laughs> 300 euros or something, uh, which will then uh, connect the speakers HDMI stream. And um, so I, I like, not hijack, but kind of um, man in the middle of the, the speakers uh, HDMI stream before it goes to the, like whatever setup the, the place has. Um, and then using also as in the same way as you like open broadcast software to use the, the um, the mixer board um, is then treated as a webcam, like to the computer, it, it sees it like a webcam. So, so then just use uh, open broadcast software to, to stream it to YouTube uh, from there. But like using the, the physical device, we can like switch between different modes, but I haven't planned on like anything facing the audience, uh, just just speaker like in a, like the bottom corner or something and then the, the HDMI stream. Uh, Pretty much. In my experience, the problem that, uh, with multiple uh, video streams is that, uh, I mean, when you record a very open broadcast software, uh, my my very fancy MacBook Pro doesn't have enough uh, views in it to manage too many video streams at the same time, because you lose bit rate on one of them, and it, I'd rather it not be the presenter stream. Yeah, so so that's why I have the, the different device, which actually does the multiplexing, and then like it's just. The computer just gets one stream of, of a certain size. It can doesn't even have to be so high and resolution. The board can get like all yeah. the images built yes. and built like together. Yes. I really want to know about this mixer board. Can we like you know case put this <laughs> discussion to the side and after? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, and then you can uh, present the outcome uh, at some time. Yeah. Cool. Yep. <laughs> But I, but I think you are right in, uh, in in the disclaimer that we should probably uh, if, if if anybody is not uh, I don't want their picture taken and stuff like that we should of course not uh, post it anywhere. Um, but I'm not sure where to uh, to actually put that in. Uh, it could be as Alan just mentioned. Uh, yeah, raise your hand if you don't want to be on a picture, um, and uh, we'll um, not do any sort of public stuff for that meetup. Yes. Yeah. Or, or like in, in in my case, I I won't record the audience at all, yeah. like in the stream. But, but then like exclude people from photos if if they are like don't want to be seen. Yeah. Cool. Next. But yeah. So so Google Photos uh, is a fine for for people, or should we like do our own Twitter bots that aggregates? <laughs> can we try an experiment to see if we can increase the amount of media on Twitter with like encouraging people and then we can do like a search and see how many pictures we get and if we think that's not enough then we can have a shared uh, photos okay that makes sense because that then we also crowdsource the pictures 
yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> makes sense <laughs> makes sense makes sense uh, <laughs> and then uh just uh, announcement i mean some you've probably seen this through twitter or, or similar but uh, myself and casper will will have the kubecon talk um which is going to be really exciting uh, about exactly this topic uh, <laughs> to, to get some some visibility of the of the Nordics at KubeCon too. Um, it's gonna be exciting. You know, we need to do the slides. I had some mileage. Um, yeah, we need to, uh, to do um, something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that was heads up. Uh, then status of uh, the Oslo and Icelandic meetups. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Do we did we did we find did we find anyone? I mean, there was one person that talked about Oslo. Yeah, I think. Helping out. Yeah. Um, so I can can't remember his name. That, that was the original organizer of the the Oslo meetup. Um, I think had a, had some uh, problems in in terms of the the co-organizers not uh, doing a lot of stuff, and he had a lot of stuff to do as well. So he was looking for. Um, yeah, for for new co-organizers basically, and and I think we found one, but I uh, I'm, I actually haven't heard anything more than that. Um, so I'm I'm not sure that's any progress, um, but we should uh, probably reach out and, uh, and ask if we could uh, help with anything, because we need a. Uh, it would be nice to uh, to get them in the meetups repo and get them uh, visible on the. Uh, on the page and stuff like that, and, and actually have them organize some meetups. <laughs> yeah. Um. Maybe that's something we could tweet about. Like, yeah. I'm not sure how many people in Norway know about the Cloud Native Nordics. Maybe there's some way to reach out. Yeah, CNCF or something uh, to get more visibility. CNCF can uh, retweet at, at least. Uh, I've had a couple of times where uh, CNCF can retweet. Uh, tweets that make sense, of, obviously, by just ask, going to the Cloud Native um, okay. Slack and asking in social media. Yeah. So, I mean, what we could do is that we could, someone, there's maybe this guy that needs more co-organizers could tweet like, oh, looking for more co-organizers to the Cloud Native Nordics Oslo meetup or whatever it's called. And then we could have like a retweet to create more visibility or something. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. I'm not sure how many, uh, is there any way to uh, in Slack to, to see where people are from? I'm not sure if it's uh, on their profile page. I think they have filled it out. Is it a requirement to put in a country? I'm not actually sure it is. No, I don't think so. It's but people sometimes people do. Hmm. We could make it a requirement, of course, to uh, for them to enter their country when they sign up. Would be nice to have some idea of where people are actually located. That's true. That's true. And I don't, I don't know what others think, but I don't think it's a big deal if, no. if people are in in a this kind of community and, and just share their the country. It's yeah, that's kind of yeah. And but I don't know. Yeah. And in terms of. Iceland, I'm not sure either. So <laughs> Chris Nova joined and wanted to do some stuff. Um, and you, I think, it was you, Lucas, invited, yeah, Stefan. Um, and I think they did a meetup, but I'm not sure if we should probably reach out to them and uh, have them join sort of officially and, and, and create their um, a folder on at the meetups and stuff like that and help them out in, in actually getting started and getting them in there um, and sort of explain why they should be in there and yeah yeah i i can try to reach out to stefan um i i know him from before cool 
cool. Um, found at a Nordic conference. Yeah, I'm not sure if Rasmus is actually here. He asked me to put it on for this time, but I can I can give a, a really short update. Um, at last uh, ambassador meeting, um, the one of the organizers from the ambassador, the Kubernetes, they what is what's it called? Two seconds. Uh, Kubernetes Community Day in Amsterdam, which was uh, in the beginning of September, um, was sort of uh, talking about uh, how they sort of organized, community organized uh, this uh, conference. Um, and he said it was a lot of work, uh, as you could probably imagine, um, but uh, he, he could be a, a really good guy to sort of reach out to in, in terms of uh, getting some more insights into how we could actually do this. Um, I put some some of my notes in the uh, conference channel in the Cloud Native Nordic Slack. Um, so if you're interested, you can uh, can join that channel. And uh, but I think we need to if if we if we want to do this, we uh, we we definitely need four or five really dedicated people to actually sit down and, and allocate some time for actually uh, setting up a, a conference because it's uh, quite a lot of work. And he also took some personal risk in uh, in sort of between getting uh, the, the venue needed some money up front um, and he didn't uh, he of course also needed some uh, some uh, commitment from sponsors so he, he took a personal risk in, in that sense um, but it, it sort of panned out um, and they the the last sort of um, thing he mentioned was that they um, used um, a company that sort of does uh, conference organizing um, to actually sign the contracts do all the legal stuff and uh, and, and and have that um, so they didn't have to set up a, a an organization by themselves um but if you are interested in uh, in creating a conference in the Nordics, uh, join the conference channel, and uh, we, we should probably do a, a, a separate um, conference call um, if we can find dedicated people that are actually willing to put some work into this. So when we say conference, like what's, what size and what uh, ambition level are we talking about? Yeah, uh, it, it could be, be anything. Uh, the community, uh, the Kubernetes Community Days is, um, it's a, an official CNTF um, thing they are trying to start. Uh, they have a, a CNTF community uh, repo. It's, it's also in the in, in the conference channel. Um, um, it's not that I think this was the the first sort of community day in Amsterdam, and it was a conference of 300, 350 people or something like that. Um, and it really depends on uh, what we want to do. Uh, we could create small local ones, or we could create one bigger Nordic uh, one as well. It really, it really depends on, uh, on on the people, I guess, that are sort of uh, that wants to do this. Um, but yeah, that's a uh, point thing that we last week. Sorry. Uh, last week we organized an internal conference. Uh, or I help organize an internal conference. Oh, cool. uh, we do four days on conference at Melfortware. We have about somewhere between 80 and 100 attendees. And I do know that it's a lot of work to get it to work out, but it's less work because we don't have to handle CFPs. We don't have to handle making a schedule, et cetera. All these things are managed by the attendees. So that's what I mean with like, we can put it on a different ambition level. If we decide to do it on conference style, then we put a lot more pressure on that. Uh, and it will be less work in preparation and stuff. So there's like different things we can do depending on how big we want to start out. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think we talked uh, about this uh, earlier, but I, I attended uh, one of the DevOps days and it was a nice mix of uh, talks and sort of the on conference um, way of doing it with uh, open space uh, discussions and stuff like that. So like, I think that would be a really cool thing to have at uh, at a community, Kubernetes community or community day or cloud native community or whatever we sort of want to call it. Um, but yeah, if 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 we if you are really interested in uh, in uh, in this, join the conference channel and we should, we could uh, could set up uh, something and see if there's enough people to actually do this because that it would require a lot of work to uh, to do this maybe depending on how we do it of course. 
but yeah, all my notes from uh, from the ambassador meeting uh, the other day is, is in there, and there's also links to the CNTF repo and the, the community uh, community community days in Amsterdam. Um, and we could probably reach out to uh, to the guy uh, and get more insights as well. Um, I also know that Jasmine, who helps organize in uh, in Copenhagen, um, does conferences uh, for a living. I guess I think she's a conference manager or something like that. Um, she does a lot of conferences for, for Pragma uh, in the Nordics as well. So that could be a, an interesting partner to work with as well, probably, because they will have sort of the setup that uh, that we need to actually do this and could probably help us out in terms of uh, contracts and stuff. Um, but yeah, she's in the, in the conference channel as well because she, uh, she was also interested in it uh, last time we, we put this up. So I think that's that agenda item. But uh, is Oliver here? Yes, I'm back here. I had some problems oh. with it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Just in time. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, about uh, synchronizing the dates of the meetups. I I actually like the idea of this. Um, Nordics tour October so that you uh, we had several speakers that were coming to several meetups at the same well in one week and that was quite nice how that worked out so is there any plan that we could maybe synchronize further meetups as well so that we have maybe people that we share that come to several meetups. Is there any thought of that? I would love to do more of these and uh, maybe find a, maybe create a, a sort of a concept for it that we can sort of pitch to uh, international speakers as well. That would be probably a lot easier to, uh, if we had something concrete. This time it was just uh, me uh, pinging uh, people and trying to, uh, to make it happen and uh, sort of organize everything and, and see if we could actually yeah align on dates it was it's actually been quite a lot of work to uh, to set this up um but i i think it would be nice to have this sort of written as a concept uh, come to the nordics for a week uh, monday to friday do four meetups in four different cities around the nordics um and we could probably sell this as a as a concept in some way to uh, international speakers um because it would be probably uh, be very um, interesting for them, especially if they are coming from a, a SaaS provider to sort of not sell that product, but, uh, but sort of talk about the, the open source stuff they're doing. Like um, we had um, Nick Jones, who unfortunately had to cancel from, uh, from what is called now D2IQ, Mrs. Fear, the old, the old one. Um, that were actually he was not going to talk about d 2 iq but more about the some one of the open source projects that they are doing um, and yeah um we have I been talking about uh, with the maintainer from minikube sorry as well a maintainer from minikube is local to gothenburg uh, we've been trying to volunteer him to do a meetup uh, and I think we could also like talk to him if he would be interested in visiting the other meetup groups in the Nordics as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think it's uh, whenever you talk to to somebody that sort of have the, the, the backing from the company or something like that to actually do tours like this, um, pitch them the, them the idea and uh, and put it in the organizer's channel and we, we should see if we can, can make it happen in some way. Um, but right now it is, um, a lot of sort of communication back and forth and uh, trying to align on dates and, and venues and get confirmations and stuff like that. Um, I spent uh, quite a while, uh, I used a lot of time uh, on actually doing this, but um, let's see how it goes. So one, one thing, uh, yeah, I think it would make sense to have a dedicated, once we've launched the new site, uh, like for for real, uh, we can have a dedicated page there uh, with basically some, some information. I mean, the the stuff we have checked in that's marked down now, uh, we just re-render to uh, like sponsor yeah. guide and like 
whatever, all these things. Um, re-render them to, to the site and uh, from there we can have like a link to a form or Google form or something like I'm interested in coming this week to the Nordic countries and um, represent like company Fu and then like I could talk about this and then we will get the notifications uh, I mean they might just want to reach out for email too fine uh, <laughs> or slack but, but like one way of, of, of getting the uh, the input, um, which would be self-service, even though we have to do uh, most of the stuff manually, uh, there would be a way to do self-service that I'm interested ping me, like I'm interested in coming this week, ping me for more details, actually coordinate. Yeah. Um, like click, click the, the check boxes on what cities you're interested in. <laughs> Something like that, I don't know. Yeah, I think the, 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 the the challenge uh, that we will probably get is that we have uh, sort of capital, four capitals in the four countries that we're in and uh, getting speakers to, to the smaller cities is, is maybe going to be a, a, a challenge in, in, in some way. Um, we could of course do uh, tours around, so now right now we have three groups in Denmark, there's three groups in Finland as well. and. and maybe consider more local yeah. concepts as well um, to make it easier and, and cheaper for the speakers to uh, to come here and maybe have them come do a, a second tour in, of Denmark and a tour of Sweden and a tour of Finland and, and yeah. I have that. a brilliant idea. Let's rent the tour bus and then we just drive them around and they can't <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 actually not a bad idea. Uh, I know people are doing that in our company where they are where, where they are having people riding on bikes and they're filming it and filming the events and and making a movie out of that. And that in itself is the branding for the speaker. So it's not a bad idea actually. It's perfect. So Lucas is bringing his gear. We're having like recording studio on yep. the <laughs> yes. location. I and would be like, brother is going to edit a movie. <laughs> and then we have some some really good my, my brother is I said my brother is doing video editing, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so who is doing the soundtrack? And we need a mission. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then like we, we we have really good Wi-Fi, like uh, and the Raspberry Pi cluster on that bus. So yes. <laughs> there we go. Like everything we need. Yeah. Perfect. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I think right now uh, these tours is uh, yeah, it's. Uh, Studio. It, it's right now it's studio soft, but we, we could it would be nice to have sort of a, yeah a self service uh, platform a Google Form whatever to get people. Um, but I think there's a lot of um, us doing some uh, proactive work as well in, in pinging speakers and so I was, I was just pinging uh, Russ Miles uh, on Twitter and, and asking him because I saw he was doing a tour of Germany or something like that and asking hey do you want to come to the Nordics as well? So if if you see people sort of doing these kind of tours, ping them and ask them if they're interested and, and be proactive because I, it's nice to have a, a form, but it, it's usually, I'm not sure if uh, if people actually fill out the form. Um, but yeah, if you were in the bus yeah. and drive around you, yeah, they will probably fill out the form, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, but I think that we can also do like smaller efforts. Uh, I mean, I know for instance that this fall is a bit already scheduled with KubeCon coming up and other events. Uh, but my team is very interested in contributing as well. And if that means that we can get someone else to come to us at one of our meetups, we can definitely send someone away as well to yeah. talk at your meetups. So uh, reach out to us and let's do exchange that way as well. Uh, because even though we're not feature speakers at conferences, we do things that, uh, I mean, everyone here are interested and in do things with Cloud mm -hmm. Native. So we probably can do sessions that are interesting for everyone that they haven't heard about yet. Yes. Yep. That's, uh, that's a good idea. Awesome. Did that, did that answer your question, Oliver? Or did we, uh, is there anything else we need to uh, <laughs> discuss? No, I think that's good. Uh, I just wanted to bring it up to have some thoughts of that.
and it's Great. clear that you need to have some kind of initiative of like you did some person that just organizes it but i thought just that when the the dates of the meetups would be kind of aligned it would be already from the beginning easier to to invite people for that that week i mean you always need to communicate with the people hey which week, week would be good and then yeah. it, it takes longer to discuss with everybody to answer that guy so if there would be like kind of weeks that we would have meetups we could better invite people there but maybe that it's too it's too much so yeah it's it's I, that, I think that's a good idea too if we sort of set something up let's say in, in three months from now or something like that we, we want to be able to do a tour of four cities um and we align on dates and and stuff like that we could then start picking uh, people instead of doing it the other way around as i did um just writing to random people if they sort of had time to uh, <laughs> to arrange a meetup for, for a particular day. So we could be more structured and, uh, and try to do it up front and be more proactive in, in actually creating a date and, and try to fill the, fill the date with, uh, with relevant speakers. That's a good idea. So it's maybe that ties really well into Jessica's next point. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about the calendar. <laughs> I'm going to screen share. Maybe. You can. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do that. I think someone else uh, needs to start before. Yeah. Yes. Yep. There okay. you go. Uh, okay. You used to get everything because I can't be bothered. Um, so let's go to the calendar. I created a Cloud Nordics calendar, uh, settings and sharing. Uh, so it's shared with the Cloud Native Nordic School Group. Uh, anyone that has it, you probably got an email just at the beginning of the meeting. You can yes. make changes and you can manage sharing. Uh, I try to remove myself, but I just don't seem to be able to do it. So it will be there. Yeah, well, well, sure. Sure. But when you add it, it will actually be added to the calendar of the uh, Cloud Native Nordics calendar. Uh, I did a copy of Casper's event invitations, so it's the Zoom meeting ID with some phone number for US people, uh, and I added like a link to the meeting notes, and I added a note that meetings will be recorded, so people know that beforehand. Uh, and basically what my I'm thinking as well is that it would be possible for you to now just create a new event, pick the Cloud Nordics event, and be like, oh, this is going to be meet up in Gothenburg or whatever at lunch tomorrow we have a meetup in Gothenburg and this will be shared um, I know it might be a hassle to fill out in multiple places but I mean if you are potentially planning for a meetup at one point and we want to start syncing something for December it could be nice to be like potential the uh, meetup date for Kubernetes Gothenburg or whatever that's really good yeah. yeah and this means that it doesn't have it to be in your personal accounts anymore uh, I did see that it showed up in my yeah, I got a personal invitation as well because I invited the Cloud Native Nordics people. Uh, so it shows up two, twice in my calendar, but whatever. <laughs> it's nice. It's really nice. Okay. I kind of wanted to add the, the, uh, the attendance as well because otherwise people might not see it. Uh, so it shows up twice or not. Anyhow, uh, that's all. Awesome. Was that the uh, the last item of the agenda? I'm now seeing full screen and not seeing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it, it's it's, uh, it's uh, it was the last. But um, so I know just like spinning further on the <laughs> on the generator stuff. Like, is there some way we could we could use the uh, the meetup um, API? Because I mean, we have a API client in the meetup uh, repo, meetup repo. Uh, is there some way we could use that to push or sync with the calendar somehow? Has, has anybody tried it? So I do know there's an API AI for Google Calendar because there's also Slack integration. We could add to the events um, channel or wherever we want to add. Uh, because I've done this for a different calendar. So we get a notification, like you can say, like remind 10 minutes before or when event starts. And you can get that notification into a Slack channel based on a Google Calendar. Uh, and that's some kind of API magic happening. So I'm assuming there's an API for Google Calendar. Cool. Yeah. 
cool. Yeah, that'd be nice to have that just come automatically instead of me posting reminders. Yeah. I was thinking like if it's just still for something that is not planned yet, because when it's once it's planned, it might be a little bit too late to do all the syncing we talked about in the previous point. Yeah. And it would be nice to uh, sync directly from Meetup down to the uh, to the calendar, as uh, Lucas mentioned. Yeah. Could I add one thing? Yes. Um, because I, um, I I don't know if if people have seen that, but I've actually tried to create some Google Slide templates for for the uh, for well for our meetup group in Alborg and also well a suggestive uh, Nordic one with a with a with a, a wrong uh, background, but just to to see if that would have any value for you people that that we would have like a fixed uh, template. Uh, uh, a Google slide template that we could offer to uh, the people starting new meetup groups and uh, it would be fairly easy for them to drop in the, uh, the background they created and then they, they would have something with the real with the right fonts and the right the, the different types of uh, of uh, pages like front pages uh, the page for the uh, for a screenshot for the meetup uh, uh, what do you call it uh, so me uh, set up uh, for LinkedIn posts and whatever, and then you would have uh, different types of, uh, of, of of pages for uh, actually creating the uh, meetup itself. Uh, uh, are you talking about like a ghost theme? Yes, that's what I that's what I created with with the different types of pages. I don't know whether it's sufficient what's in there or not, but that, at least that's what I've been using for the uh, the two meetups in Allbox so far. So if anyone uh, would, well, I don't find that useful or maybe even <laughs> make, make it better, that would be great. I did the same for the surveys. Uh, I created some survey templates for for the uh, for the Allbox meetup group, and I'm willing to share those also if uh, if people are interested. I think it sounds perfect. Can you add it to like uh, we have the uh, Cloud Native Nordics Google Drive? Uh, yes, I, they are already there, but they're I think they are placed on the old board because that's uh, you know, that was kind of their jurisdiction. So that's why I, I didn't find them. I, don't think I added. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I added the survey so far, but I can do that if if you're interested. It's yeah, I think, I think it, it would be useful to have a yeah have a have a template and also have the sort of the, the default slides with the this is the definition of cloud native computing foundation uh, whatever we we sort of do it in, in in the introductions i also started to to create a a, a small template uh, for uh, for slides as well in in but this is this was for the um, the presentation that lucas is are going to give at the cloud native con and maybe we could sort of uh, align those two uh, and and make it the the official one at, at some point um but yeah i i haven't uh, i only created a, a front page and a, a, a text slide but that's that's it um but we we, we should uh, we should align and uh, and create one template yeah so so what uh what cncf actually does is they have the cncf over overview or something like that slides uh, which are publicly available uh, also featured in CNCF github.com slash CNCF slash presentations and um, that changes like every time they something in the landscape changes that template changes uh, but for for my personal or like for my presentations I've, I've been copying uh, which references like reference back of, of course but like uh, copying the slides just as is uh, to to some of my presentations to be able, for example, to show the, the KubeCon and to, to make yourself. Um, so maybe we could use the same pattern and, and just have one place where we have a set of, well, for example, the, the Alan's uh, Team, uh, it's called, and uh, but also also a set of content, uh, which which you could. I, I have some kind of thing uh, already. I can I can share it uh, there, the which I use for the meet for the finished meetup, which is essentially the exactly the same set of slides before every and I think Kepler and most of us have the, some kind of thing, uh, which is similar I to that. Someone else. I just took, cool. I don't remember if it was Casper or if it was Lucas, I just copied one, changed everything to be Gothenburg and I run it.
Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So, but but uh, uh, stuff updates. Uh, you, like the only thing you need to do in in before every meetup to actually have up to date slides, given that we all change responsibly uh, the, the template is like literally copy and then said city to Gothenburg or something like uh, whatever whatever we use there. Yeah, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. We could add add that as an action item to make sense. Please do. Uh, I think we are out of, out of time. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was a really great meeting. Uh, I think there's a lot of cool stuff in here uh, that we can uh, continue working on. Um, again, please pitch in if you want to do some front end stuff, <laughs> because uh, that's a lot of front end stuff that we need to uh, to align and, and finish. Um, if there's is there anything else that we need to cover before we, we sort of end this call? No, but Lucas can you just hang around and we can talk about mixers. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I will stop the recording now and uh, thank you all for uh, attending today and uh, see you next time. Yep. Bye. 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 Bye.